Hey ladies and gents, this is um, the uplighter from the other video, well in fact it's not the, the same one, it's actually another one because I liked my halogen halide mod so much I decided to build another one and uh, that's when I realised just how lucky I was with the first attempt. So I got another light, it's an Argos uplighter, cost about 15 quid I think, and I thought I'd try out some new bulbs and I got uh, this one here, this is a Philips CDMTD ceramic metal halide, 70 watt, um, 3000K, uh, very high colour rendering. And uh, just for kicks, I got this um, Iquatics 14000K um, halide lad. It's meant for Aquaria, but uh, I bought it because of this lovely spectrum on the box here, because uh, I was going to experiment with it using it for. Um, uh, SAD and stuff. Well, there's a problem because actually that's not the spectrum. They put the wrong spectrum on the box. Um, but there's more to it. So let me show you. The Philips lamp looks like up close. It's a Philips Master Color CDMTD 70 watts, um, 80 to 90 CRI, 3000 Kelvin. Uh, UV block made in Belgium. And it's got this cylindrical uh, ceramic arc tube. Uh, which is actually the old design of ceramic tubes, and Philips are quite a few years behind in their ceramic technology uh, compared to the other manufacturers, but uh, fairly conventional. By uh, replacing the quartz uh, arc tube that you see in conventional hal uh, halide lamps uh, with alumina, um, you can get much higher pressures, higher temperatures, and longer lamp life. Okay, so here's the first problem. This is the uh, glass shield the tempered glass shield that goes on top of the bulb and it fits apart from the fact that this little filling nipple here or rather evacuation nipple when the bulb is inserted obscures and fouls the the shield so let me demonstrate so in that orientation it will not go into the shield I cannot even put it in through the edge will not go so you cannot install the shield with the Philips lamp. This is okay, this is the Iquatics lamp. So there we go, Iquatics, 70 watt, 14,000 Kelvin, UV block. And you can see the fairly conventional quartz arc tube with the ceramic coated ends, that's for reflection of heat back into the arc tube to keep the temperature up. Um, Looks fine, looks like a standard halide. A couple of problems though. One is the fact that actually it's not quite the standard size. The standard 70 watt halide should be 21 millimeters in diameter. This is 22. And in particular, um, the ends are 22 millimeters. Whereas on here, on the Phillips, they're 19. So you can see that sort of slight chamfer there and this is most of the other brands actually have this appearance whereas the Iquatics doesn't and the result is is that it doesn't quite fit in the in the um, uh, holders because there's not quite enough clearance the other problem is actually the bulb is also too wide it doesn't fit in the shield and the shield is exactly 21 millimeters in diameter so a correctly sized halide should fit and it doesn't quite. It will. You can, however, slide it in because the filling nipple or the evacuation nipple is on the bottom. So that's fine. Um, the bulb itself is of relatively poor quality as well um, because actually this seal here isn't uh, properly attached. This connector it actually wobbles. I don't know if you can see that. So it's a cheap bulb. I mean, they put the wrong spectrum on the box. They put the wrong spectrum on the website. But you know it's 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 quite nice and uh, it does fire uh, reasonably easily and it produces quite a nice blue light that you saw earlier. As you can see, this is the Iquatics lamp. It's a, quite using quite a blue light compared to the overcast daylight outside. Um, it is a it is white in that you can see all colours under it with reasonable um, colour rendering. Um, but it's a very blue-white. Um, and after a lot of forcing 
and a lot of squeezing, I was able to get the lamp in um, with its, while it was in the shield tube brought in through an end. It only goes in one way round because, like I said, the bulb connectors are actually too big for the holders. Um, but fortunately, there's enough um, asymmetry in the holders to allow it to fit one way round, but not the other. The other problem is here. In fact, this is my solution to it. The problem is, is it, there's a 2.5 meter cable length between the ballast and the lamp. And in order to start the lamps, the ballast has to produce a high voltage, about 4 kilovolts. And uh, it does that using a pulse. Um, the problem is, is when you've got two wires next to each other, they form a capacitor. And when you've got a wire this long, the capacitor formed by the wire simply absorbs the pulse, and the pulse never makes it to the lamp. Now, for your regular halide, that's not really too much of a problem, because most of them will start with about 2 kilovolts. But for the ceramics, like the uh, Philips, no, it needs a good 4 kilovolts to get going. And what I found was that the Philips bulbs would not start reliably. In fact, they about 50 to 60 percent of the time they wouldn't start, and even then, it would take close to 30 seconds and a couple of attempts to get it to go. So the solution is fairly straightforward. Um, capacitance is inversely proportional to distance between your capacitor plates, or in this case the wires. So I've simply stripped the wire, which was just a regular two-core cable. Um, the high voltage is, is, is goes down the brown, which is actually still within the PVC insulation. And then the neutral is just the neutral. And of course, to maintain double insulation, I've put insulation tape around it. Um, but, and here's the trick, was I was deliberately really untidy with it. So there are big flaps and kinks and all sorts of stuff. And the idea of that is to keep the two wires as far apart as possible so that they can't sit next directly next to each other. And by doing that, I was able to get the capacitance of the wires down enough to get the ceramic lamp to start reliably. So there we go. Um, I was very lucky first time. Second time, not so lucky.